good evening district 121 before we start this webinar on youth leadership program and speechcraft can i have everybody on video please whoever can come on video for some time right Yes. So the PQD team has come up with yet another interesting webinar, how to conduct speech craft and a youth leadership program. Now, Youth Versus International is a non-profit organization, and it is also thought how we can give it back to the society, how we can use programs to help build our membership. And for that, they devised the Speechcraft program and the Youth Leadership program. Now, before we begin the web webinar, it is customary to invite somebody, but then she told that she need not be introduced. Because, yeah, by this time, uh, who is Savita, the, uh, the program quality do director, distinguished Toastmaster Savita? She is just like the president of India. Everybody knows her. And she says that what more you can add? Veena, it's the same thing, so please don't introduce. Now, from the time I was born, I've been an obedient child. Somebody tells me not to do something, and I'll just go ahead and do just that. So here too, I I am I am not I'm doing the thing. But here, I'm not going to tell you her DTM, her qualification, and that she is known to each and every person in Mangalore. No, I'm not doing all that. And her educational qualifications in Mangalore. I'll ask you one question. How many of you have seen the movie Moana? How many of you have been enchanted by that person, Moana? Every time you should see that kid, there is a sort of happiness that come to your face, right? So all the introductions put aside, I just introduce her in just one word. Let's all get a big round of applause. Welcome the Moana of District 121, who never fails to enchant any person she meets. Big round of applause, distinguished Toastmaster Savita Salian, the Program Quality Director. The stage is all yours. Thank you, Veena. That was too big and an elaborate introduction and oh, too overwhelming too. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, dear Toastmasters, a warm welcome to this exciting webinar on speech craft and youth leadership. As a program college director, it's my privilege to welcome you this evening. This webinar marks a significant step forward in our district mission to empower communicators and leaders of all ages. So in today's world, effective communication and leadership skills are more crucial than ever. So they unlock doors to opportunities, bridge differences, and drive positive changes. Whether you are a seasoned professional, an aspiring entrepreneur, or a passionate young leader, the ability to speak confidently, think critically, and inspire others is invaluable. That's why, as Veena said, at the PQD office, we decided to offer a webinar on two of Toastmasters International's most impactful programs, that is Speechcraft and Youth Leadership. Speechcraft is a foundational program designed to equip participants with the basic skill of public speaking through a structured curriculum. So Speechcraft is the perfect springboard for your communication journey. Now, for our young, younger members, we have the Dynamic Youth Leadership Program. This program fosters valuable leadership skills in teenagers, such as teamwork, pro uh, problem solving, critical thinking, and effective communication through interactive workshop, hands-on activities, and mentorship opportunities. The young people learn to lead with confidence, embrace their potential, and make a positive impact in their communities. So both Speechcraft and Youth Leadership offers a treasure trove of benefits. It is indeed a pleasure to have with us two exceptional individuals who have made significant contribution to the Toastmasters. So let's warmly welcome DTM Ramlal and DTM Samuel Johnson. 
DTM Ramlal, the first distinguished Toastmaster in India, has played a pivotal role in the growth of Toastmasters in the country. His dedication, leadership, and effective communication skill has been instrumental in fostering the Toastmaster spirit as a charter member of several clubs, a mentor for individuals and clubs, and the facilitator of numerous preach crowds. DTM Ramlal stands as a beacon of inspiration for Toastmasters enthusiasts. If there's anyone capable of conducting a speech craft program single-handedly, it is undoubtedly him. We are, we are honored to have him as one of our resource persons today. Joining DTM Ramlal is DTM Samuel Johnson, our esteemed Youth Leadership Program and Speech Craft Chair. DTM Samuel Johnson, a seasoned Toastmaster, committed leader and effective communicator, has put in a lot of effort as the Speech Craft and YLP Coordinator to bring these programs before us and highlight their effectiveness in the Toastmasters program. Dear DTM Johnson, a warm welcome to you at this webinar. We look forward to listening to you and knowing more about these two valuable programs. DTM Sapna Shanoi, Division F Director and DTM and Toastmaster Vanita, Co-Conference Chair of Trishendo, will be joining us to pose questions to DTM Johnson and DTM Ramla. Queries put up by our audience members and perhaps bring up other issues that throw light on the program. We offer them a happy welcome. Dear DTM Sapna and uh, Toastmaster Benita, we await your valuable inputs too. Welcome to the webinar. Dear members who uh, have logged in, a respectful welcome to you. Tell, it where had John so gone? Just... How long was the return trip? John? I think you need to mute everyone. Guru, mute people on it. Members? Dear members who have logged in, a respectful welcome to you. It is your interest in learning that supports and motivates us. I assure you that your spending time here at this webinar will surely be worth it. So let's learn together. Over to you, Veena. Thank you. I invite Roshni to in introduce the facilitator for the day, Distinguished Toastmaster Samuel Johnson. Thank you, DTM Veena. It's my privilege to introduce our facilitator for today. He is a mechanical engineer by education, an engineering specialist by profession, Toastmaster by passion, worked as a program project management specialist. Oh, wait, wait. I'm sure this is a not so not an updated resume, I guess. Let me introduce the facilitator based on my, uh, uh, you know, a conversation with him. Just say two months back, I was the lucky one to say, uh, to have a one-to-one -one conversation with him on this very topic, which we are going to uh, have a webinar session today. It was a one-to-one -one topic. And he was so kind and uh, gave me so much of time and help to explain the whole thing, whole speech craft. I must say it was a total web webinar session. And I'm sure all of you will get into the same, uh, what, what do I say? You, you will also get enriched the way I was enriched the other day. He also offered help. He said he will help you any time you need when it comes to speech craft and YLP. Not only speech craft and YLP, I'm sure he'll help you in any uh, any topic. He he really made me feel that Toastmasters is a family. Also, he was twice distinct uh, District 79 manager for YLP and speech craft, and also conducted more than 30 plus youth leader program and speechcraft programs. So help me welcome 
Uh, the facilitator for today, DTM Johnson. Over to you, DTM Johnson. Thank you so much, um, Toastmaster Roshni. And um, I wish my wife was listening to this very conversation. I'm upstairs in the so-called Toastmaster studio and I keep my door locked because she is very good accounter. At the end of every session, she'll give me the report. So I'm so nervous to make her to listen to my speech. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and dear guests. As our PQD correctly mentioned, there are two community outreach programs which Toastmasters International has framed up. Now let me begin with explaining how this program helped me. I was the parent of two teenagers, probably about 11, 12, 13 years ago. And I came across the youth leadership program by one of the local club. And I enrolled them. I used to drop them and pick them up. And the one day they said, okay, there is a grand finale. There is a speech contest where the parents can join. Well, here we go. I went and sat as a listener. And a few minutes later, they're going to start the humorous speech contest. And one of the contestants was my own son. I just couldn't believe he as a humorous speech contestant. All right, well, he did his seven minutes and the results were getting announced. Believe it or not, he emerged as the champion speaker. And I could understand what the eight sessions of a youth leadership program could transform him. So I went to the coordinator and asked, is there something where we adults can enroll as well? And he said, well, there is a Toastmasters program. And there were several parents like me, we joined together that we launched a new club instead of joining another existing club. And that's how I entered into Toastmasters International. Why I am telling is, this one is, there are several of us listening or participating in this session and may not realize that how much impact these programs can do in your own personal journey at professional or personal. And that's how these programs are framed up and structured so that it benefits beyond the participants. And today we're going to take a deep dive into these two programs within the available time. And I want all of you to be part of this discussion. It is not going to be just me talking. So as correctly mentioned by our webinar manager, keep your screen open unless you have to uh, be away or any reason. So that will help me to see I'm glad to see that we've got few of them, but keep it open and uh, let me able to feel that there are people listening to us and we can engage in a little conversation as we progress. So before I get in, we have two segments today we're going to cover. First, we're going to be zooming into the speech craft program itself. Then we will take the youth leadership program. So in this room, have you ever participated or conducted a speech craft program. Can you raise your hand or you can unmute and say whichever fashion or you can put in the chat box. DTM Bina, please help me if anybody is in the chat box reporting. Yes, so Kavita. Few hands. Yeah. Kavita, Shenoisa. Yes. Great. Okay. Only that me. Right. So I'm glad that there are some of the Toastmasters who are really conducted and executed this program for the benefit of others. So with that note, so I'll try to be as careful as I am. And if I do go wrong, please help me, Kavida, Shenai, any one of you, feel free to interrupt. And uh, we will take that feedback into progress with this session. So I'd like to welcome again, all those who have joined now. We have 58. Uh, participant in this room, very encouraging. As I mentioned, keep your camera on and then uh, we will take you through this program. So let me try to get the uh, slideshow going so that we can understand more about this program. I guess you are able to see my screen, right? 
Yes, good evening. Yes, Thank you. Yes. Yes, yes, we can. Right. So the first thing comes to our mind is what is it? What is this spacecraft program? And then naturally a question will come why do we conduct it? And that may not stop us our thought process. Where do we conduct it? And how do we conduct it? So these are the four segments we're going to be exploring today so that when you leave today's session, you have a 360 degree understanding of how these programs works and your role can help to get this program across to the community or to any organization so that several can attend and transform themselves. So first let us look into it. What is a spacecraft? It is a program developed for known Toastmasters. They could be anyone who may be from a corporate, may be from a school, may be a group of people, may be residents of a uh, society, community, or could be homemakers, anyone, a group who would like to understand and join can be uh, eligible to, so it is a totally, it's a non Toastmasters program. The curriculum has been compiled by Toastmasters International as an educational module. It is well-structured program so that it is not just you and me or it is. it has been developed, tested and practiced across several countries. It is a standalone program by Toastmasters International. It is a module you can conduct, you finish the session and you graduate, you are completed on it. So it's a uh, program which is owned by itself. You could conduct this program as a separate event, as separate sessions, or you could do it as part of your club meeting. We'll talk about that a little later as we progress. So this is a brief understanding of what is spacecraft all about. Let us keep going. Why do we conduct spacecraft? It's a proven program developed by Toastmasters International for membership building. We have seen success rates of more than 60% at the end of every spacecraft program, the participants enroll themselves as members. And you'll hear some of the success stories towards the end of the programs when we will be listening live by the spacecraft and YLP coordinators. It is a platform to test your own coordinating and mentoring skills. You as a coordinator for spacecraft will be taking, exploring your potential, how you can coordinate such a program. And I'm sure many of you will be interested after this session. It's an opportunity as mentioned earlier, it's an opportunity to give back to the community. We all learn so much, we get enriched, but there is a time we have to give it back to the society. And this community outreach program enables us in that framework. It is also an effective team building platform. You meet with the people from different walks of life, then you become a small family. You learn how to get things done through a team. And that's where this program makes it more effective. Now, anything you do in life, we need to know, have a good understanding of what are the benefits of that. So there are some low hanging fruits and let us look into what are those ones. You're going to be transforming a group of minimum five participants in a spacecraft program. And it will help you as a major milestone in your distinguished Toastmaster journey. And I'm sure some of you attending today or your friends may be aspiring DTMs. They have conducted their, completed their educational modules, done few things, but they may have to complete something more to achieve the highest educational award of distinguished Toastmaster from Toastmaster International. By conducting a spacecraft, your club is going to be included in the Hall of Fame recognition by the district. 
you enhance your leadership skills. Let us take a little close look at what is this benefits for those aspiring Toastmasters who are heading for their DTM journey. Now, Distinguished Toastmaster being the highest level of award by Toastmasters International has not only educational segment, it has five segments which enables you to achieve Distinguished Toastmaster role. You have to complete the educational requirements, completing two paths, and you have to take a club leadership, 12 months officer role in a club. And also you have to have a district leadership. You have to be a district officer, starting from area director in for one term. And now comes, there is club extension and club support. Under club extension, either you have to sponsor a club, which means you have to help and assist to charter a new club and be the sponsor then you will get a credit. Alternative sources are you be a spacecraft coordinator or a youth leadership coordinator. So that's where it helps you by conducting a spacecraft program or youth leadership program, which we are understanding today will enable you to get that particular credit towards your DTM journey. So I encourage you, those who are in the process of marching towards to become a DTM, carefully understand it and try to implement it with the support of your club. And we'll get to know the detailed elements of how actually this program works for all of us. How do we conduct spacecraft? We used to conduct it until last year, the manual way. We have a manual, then we have conducting it uh, by multiple sessions. Now that was the way, but things have changed as we all move towards the digital era. And we, that's the element of the digital bundle program of the spacecraft will be unfolding or unveiling to you if you haven't heard about it. So first thing is identify potential participants. And that's what you need. You need five, 10, 15, 20 participants, if you can group them. And then you have to think about, as a coordinator, how to buy the digital bundle. We will explain more about it in the coming slides. You need to prepare a plan, a schedule, responsibilities of your supporting team, how you can execute a successful spacecraft program. And then you form the team, assign a spacecraft coordinator, supported with assistant coordinators and mentors and workshop presenters, so that you can complete the spacecraft program to the full requirements envisioned by Toastmasters International. So that's the basic elements of spacecraft program. And I want those who are listening right now in the room, please scribble down your questions. When we will take a pause, you can either send it to uh, Distinguished Toastmaster Bina or you could put it in the chat box where we'll capture it and we'll try to provide you with the additional information and clarification to the best of our ability. No program gets completed until we celebrate it. So, so do spacecraft as well. So we will have a a grand finale, which will include a speech contest. And that's where the members will get an opportunity to witness, to challenge themselves, how, what they learned, they can put it into showcase their talent. And that's what the program allows you. So you have so far understood how and why these programs are conducted, what is the benefit. And now we're going to step into the operation side of this program, how actually the program works. As I mentioned earlier, the participants of the speechcraft program can be from any walks of life, from corporate organizations, schools, anywhere you have a group identified and you take a minimum, I would say five to 25 members is ideally enough to handle. So they get the effective participation as well as roles to do in their sessions. And 
These are coordinated by Toastmasters who are called the spacecraft coordinators. And those who are attending here, the spacecraft is called spacecrafters. And that's the terminology we'll use in the coming part of this session. Of course, you need your club to support a session. The club members and the club ESCOM are the key pillars in supporting this program. The sessions are conducted more or less like the Toastmasters meeting, where there will be a published agenda, there will be role players, there will be speakers who will be progressing based on the contents of the spacecraft manual, which we will be showcasing in the coming slides. When or how do you understand more about it? As most of you, I guess, are Toastmasters members, you have logged into the Toastmasters International website. And you'll see these tabs. And you'll see under education program, when you click the homes page, will show you the education programs. And you click it, the drop down menu will show you the pathways, spacecraft, and youth program, as you are able to see on the screen. So that's where your first place to look for more details about the spacecraft program. So that's uh, to understand about it, and I'll show some of them when you click when you click it. What happens? So it opens out you more details about the spacecraft program from the Toastmasters International website. They were kind enough to provide a short video explaining how this program works and some of the participants' uh, experience. So you can click that video and listen to it as well. Now let us see what are the steps you will do in conducting a spacecraft. When the spacecraft program has been converted to a digital system, they have done is it enables you to purchase online through a digital bundle that is called a spacecraft digital bundle, what you're seeing on the screen. And it is $10 for each participant. So, but you have to buy a minimum of five, and that's why the $50 is shown. So this is to enable five participants and a coordinator to enroll themselves into a spacecraft program. If you have more, you just need to have more members added as long as you are able to get all their email IDs. And I would suggest to exclude company emails, use their personal emails, and the reason for that is when they get migrated to a Toastmaster, that is where they will be recognized by Toastmasters International for their credit, which I will explain a little later on. So you procure, this is the space coordinator has to do it. Now I need to alert you that by policy of the Toastmasters International and the protocol 5.0, there are guidelines for documented property because this is an intellectual property of Toastmasters International, and we have to make sure that we respond and uh, comply to those requirements in terms of reproducing or sharing their documents. So it is our responsibility collectively, and the spacecraft coordinator has to ensure the documents are properly controlled. Now, this is the, the digital bundle. When you go into the spacecraft, it allows you to see this and you can buy it online for work for five members by paying $50 and you get a, an order number for this one. And that number is very important because that's where you will be handling as the speechcraft coordinator. So it's very important that only the speechcraft coordinator should buy this digital bundle and should use and keep handy the order number. Because when you plan your sessions later on, that number and your email is very important. So it's very important that it is not your club president, whoever the spacecraft coordinator is signing up and procuring this digital bundle. Now what the bundle includes? It includes enough information for a coordinator, for a starting guide, what are the steps and how he or she has to execute this program, plan it, 
what are the information required all those legends now is gone to digital a uh, part of the execution so it is more or less like the pathways so when you upload your details you become the base camp manager of the particular batch or your group of speech crafters those who joined with you and that's where you will begin your control as the spacecraft coordinator. So you have the five batches, and uh, if you want to have more than five, you get the others enrolled, and you can have another coordinator enrolling them, so they also will get the credit. So that's uh, one good part of the spacecraft program. Uh, but you can conduct this as one session. If you do want to do any printing, it is up to you, the downloaded digital, documents can be but right now there is no any uh, digital or uh, sorry printed version of documents available offline and there are elements to market your uh, program so what do you see inside the um, digital bundle or the spacecraft program as you see here as i mentioned whatever you do in spacecraft program through the digital bundle you will get all those credits for every speech you have done in spacecrafts will get carried over when you become a Toastmaster. So the time you spent, the speeches you've done will not go in vain. Everything starting from your icebreaker speech. See on the second one, if you attended and never did a speech, of course, no credit. So starting from the first session, when the program allows you to do icebreaker, you get that credit done. And then you do a speech with a purpose, you get the second one. And then you go follow the uh, program, the contents, the curriculum of the speech craft. Your credits are going to grow through the whole seven, eight sessions as you develop. And eventually at the end, you will be completing level one and also the introduction to Toastmasters mentoring which is a requirement on the level three elective. So you get all these speeches done. You attend the program. Your speechcraft coordinator will be updating online all your completion as soon as you finish it. And once you get completed the speechcraft program and you embark the journey as a Toastmaster, your VP of the club will send a mail to the spacecraft at toastmasters.org with your details and that will get you your equivalent of the level one credited for you. So you are starting as a Toastmaster not on ground zero with already completed one level. That's what makes this program, this digital version more attracted. Time spent is credited and nothing is lost. Now, each of the session has a specific curriculum, a specific target program where you will be listening to presenters, workshop presenters, you'll be conducting speeches to support that one. So that starts with your icebreaker, your prepared speeches, your body language, all the feedback sessions, all of this will be conducted in each session. That's why it is important that the coordinators ensure that none of the participants miss any session. And once that is completed, you will be getting the full curriculum of spacecraft program done. The speeches will be completed, speeches will be noted online by your coordinator. And then that goes inside the Toastmasters International System. Now, when you, as a coordinator, because I'm sure some of the attending, those who are attending today will be planning or thinking about, I would like to be a speechcraft coordinator. So I want all of you to pay special attention to these screens, because as I mentioned earlier on, you will have an order number. This is going to be the information where the system will recognize you. So when you log in as a coordinator, the first thing it asks is the order reference. And you put your order, then basically it allows you to be the coordinator. That information is very important and you should use same email where you procured your digital bundle. And then it goes to the inside of the base camp of your participants. And you can continue login as a base camp manager, as a coordinator. And those who are attending can be 
as the participants. That allows, that allows. And once you get into the uh, coordinator screen, the screen will look like this. So where are you going to be mentioning your details, your club details, and entering the details of those who are attending the program. So that's where, and also you'll be putting the schedule of your events, your meeting dates, your follow-up meetings, and you'll put the entire calendar on the system so that all the attendees will be able to see when the program's going to be conducted. And that's the coordinator going to be uh, the scheduler for this program. So that's it's very important that you plan, you consider the holidays or consider other events and plan it accordingly. And that uh, screen is done. So once you uh, made progress, you will have each meeting scheduled and you will have the members who are going to be presenting speeches. Then you will have once their speech is completed, if you look towards the bottom, you can see the attendees' names. And then you when the speeches are completed, when someone does the icebreaker, you mark it as completed. And that helps them to get their uh, accomplishment recorded. So the speech craft coordinator has to do this online managing, not like Pathways. In Pathways, the member has to fill up the information and the VP gets approved and all. Here, it is a speech craft coordinator. Once each session is done, can go ahead and get it updated. So each session, you will be um, recording the progress. Then when you go to the um, your base camp, you will be seeing where are the programs done. And if you wanted to get a quick understanding, you can see on the right bottom, the speech craft dashboard, where you'll be able to see how many members have progressed, what are the uh, speeches being done. So you get a quick look of an overall picture of your session. And that helps you to plan and progress and to remind with the participants to ensure that they progress and deliver speeches in each of the session. Now at this time, I'm going to have, I'm going to take a small pause and I'm going to invite a distinguished Toastmaster Bina. As I mentioned earlier on, we have amongst us you, you, speech craft coordinators who has done in the past, who has done recently to share their reflections as a coordinator. So let me invite a distinguished Toastmaster Bina. And once that is finished, we'll have time for the question and answer on any of the part which we have discussed so far. So I would like to uh, invite DTM Bina to bring in the uh, speech coordinators and uh, to hear from them what are their reflections on the programs they have completed. Could you please stay? Uh... Okay. Yeah. Now, I'd like to see Ramlal, sir. Are you still here? Yeah, he's there, yeah. Yes. Yes. We have a distinguished Toastmaster, Ramlal Simon. And he is one person, and he's a charter member of one of the first club in Toastmasters. Now, when we joined Toastmasters, we asked the 100 people, how the sessioners is it going to help? He just took the leap of faith and joined Toastmasters, the first ever club in um, uh, India, the Garden City Toastmasters Club. So that 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 quality, he continued that quality for, uh, and whatever Toastmasters bought, he was the person to test it. So let's hear from distinguished Toastmaster Ramlal Simon that how has he managed the speech craft. Now, we listen to distinguished Toastmaster um, Johnson Samuel telling us how to go about it, the process. Now, let's get a hands-on experience on how to execute it. Over to you, distinguished Toastmaster Ramlal. Uh, thank you, Madam DTM Bina. I mean, uh, what has kept me going is the intention to continue learning. In fact, whatever I have derived from the Toastmasters is what I want to, everyone to experience. And that's the reason perhaps I continued in the movement for such a long time. 
and every person i come across i put put across to them that toastmasters is the thing that can alter someone's personality and speech craft is uh, mainly meant for people who do not understand what toastmasters is all about it's it's almost like a crash course so through this program they understand what toastmasters is all about and we do the same regular processes that has already been explained by dtm johnson absolutely brilliant explanation by dtm johnson he has covered every aspect every detail of a speech craft program absolutely brilliant and i have uh, taken up coordinator's role very often to see that everybody i mean benefits from it and most of it i mean i try to see that they incorporate not only learning how to speak but also incorporate energy into their presentations now what makes a difference is the energy or the enthusiasm that they display while they are on the stage so i basically do not concentrate on uh, what they say although what they say is what makes their speeches but is how they say that matters most and that is the reason why i have been successful in conducting a lot of speech speech craft programs because i don't dwell too much on the language i don't dwell too much on the content i dwell a lot on how they express themselves on the stage and that that's the reason why i've been able to mentor a lot of clubs and see that this movement keeps continuing and speech craft is a program that all of us can enjoy right you can actually display your full potential while you are the coordinator you you can uh, really i mean experiment with yourself as well while you are conducting the program how energetic can you be how you can use your mentors to help the speech crafters better their performances performances all that helps you in, in a long i mean uh, way to better yourself and most and consider this uh, speech craft program as something that brings out the best in you and when you consider it that way speech crafters will anyway benefit and in the end of course like dtm johnson said the last session we conduct a i mean contest and and we call all the parents friends and whoever it is while peas are basically meant for i mean children below 18 speech craft is for people above 18 right so while peas it's almost on the same lines both are conducted we call their parents we call their friends we see that a lot of uh, guests are present in the la- on the last day so that they get impressed by the presentations done and like dtm johnson said he saw his two children uh, doing ex- exceedingly well one of them winning the contest and that prompted him to join the toastmasters movement so that exactly is what happens when you see that the last day is full of i mean enthusiasm the last day is full of uh, something different so that's how we have been continuing and i don't know unless you ask me questions i'll not be able to answer say anything more rather than that because dtm johnson has covered everything that is to be covered under the speech craft program right so normally we conduct it for six or eight sessions in six or eight sessions it's eight sessions is always better six sessions doesn't get the full i mean benefit the stu- normally the students would love to accrue it's always better to have eight sessions so that they understand the entire and many of them get converted if the speech co- speech craft coordinator is full of enthusiasm full of life right don't treat it as a a session where you are the master no you are one among them so you also are learning so that way you continue the momentum yes ma'am any questions that Sir, you can I, ask i would them? like to know how do you plan the sessions like how do you look for people to take the sessions uh, what are in the, the in the sense uh, in the sense like anyway you you being the speech speech crafter you are not the yeah. person who takes the sessions right So you have to plan yeah. the session, bring in people. What are the yes. things that have to be looked into? How do you go about selecting a presenter for a speech craft session? Ah, uh, for that it's always better to select a Toastmaster who's full of life, 
who is full of spacecraft coordinator who does not express enthusiasm at all. Because that is going to kill the movement. So a person as coordinator who is full of life, who is full of enthusiasm, walk along with people, one who is always positive about things, one who wants to enlist the services of that he belongs to, or any other club for that matter. Always try to get somebody who is beautiful, one, one who can always bounce on the stage, not somebody who is uh, lackadaisical okay. in nature. So that will kill the movie. Thank you so stage. much, sir. I come back to Sapna. Sapna, please share your in conducting a speechcraft in the current year. I think you're the only person who has uh, taken that uh, bold step towards conducting one. So I'd like to hear from you. Thank you, Toastmaster Bina. Uh, now, as a division director, uh, I initially during the term, during the first term, I went on encouraging all the clubs to do the YLP and uh, speechcraft. Now, I'll not cover the points uh, already spoken by Toastmaster Johnson and Toastmaster Ramnal. Uh, Ramlal. Now, why I wanted everybody to do speechcraft and YLP is because one is it builds visibility in the organizations. Maybe it's an education organization or a, or, or a company. Uh, you know, it, it's easy for us to promote Toastmasters and, you know, through that we can get more Toastmasters was one intention. And secondly, it helps a lot of Toastmasters uh, to become coordinators and helps them with their DTM journey. So I was uh, you know, I felt that this would push more uh, members in Division F to become DTMs. And the third important point is also that the clubs which do speechcraft, this is one of the ways how they can raise funds for the club as well. So speechcraft is always done by the club and the club can raise funds. And when I went on encouraging everybody, I saw that, you know, everything is digital these days. You know, the manuals are very difficult to be procured and there was so much confusion initially and then I thought, okay, let me not, uh, uh, you know, uh, put uh, somebody else into difficulty. So I chose to become the first coordinator. So I went and registered myself. And then the question was, you know, we went and spoke to so many organizations, the organizations which already had Toastmasters, the college clubs. And nobody was ready to do it because most of the management was against it because we are charging. They said, uh, you know, we can't charge them more. Already they're paying for Toastmasters and all that. There was a, so, there was so much resistance from their side. And that is when I thought, you know, one of I am part of one of the women or, uh, entrepreneurs organizations in Mangalore. And they had told me they need some soft skill sessions. And that is when I told them there is something called a speechcraft in Toastmasters. So why don't we do this two month, uh, you know, every week, one session, two month program. And we had very high expectations. So there, there are 32 members in the organization. We thought at least 15 to 20 minimum we will definitely get. But the, once we started collecting money, we, you know, we uh, realized that a lot of people you know, just backed out because we were charging them. And we finally ended with 10 members who paid and joined the session. So uh, at, when the whole thing was happening, I realized one thing. You know, teaching is a great way of keeping, you know, to keep learning. Uh, for me, it was just an experiment to understand what speechcraft is and to promote speechcraft in Division F so that we can, you know, build visibility in Toastmasters. But I learned a lot of things being a coordinator, doing all the sessions that are meant that are uh, in uh, speechcraft. I lived my first two years of Toastmasters where I was learning the basics of communication. So I was also one of the participants there and I learned so many things that I think we, after a certain point, we miss out on some small things that really make us a good uh, orator or a speaker. And uh, uh, this was not the first uh, uh, speechcraft in division. The first one was done during the COVID times at a prison and that time it was not digital. So I could say this is technically a second speechcraft that is done in Division F. And this was for this woman uh, on the pruners. And let me tell you about the participant, the speech crafters. They didn't want basics because they were already established uh, people in business. Their communication was very good. So that is why we had to give something more than just soft skills for them. So that is when I decided we will customize it a little. And what we did was we followed the, you know, whatever the modules were there, we followed that and I was doing those sessions. And then we got senior Toastmasters, experienced Toastmasters to do uh, sessions, the customized part that I was referring to. Uh, just for everybody's understanding, let me uh, tell you so that you understand it better. 
uh, education session on storytelling was done by Toastmaster Royal. He is uh, a division uh, contest winner. Now, why storytelling is because all these entrepreneurs wanted to know how to tell their stories about their brands and how, about their businesses. So that really worked. And then there was one session on body language by, by DTM Malini. Malini Hebar. And trust me, nobody was interested in the session that I was doing that day. And everybody came to that session only because Malini ma'am was taking up that session. And, and they went and told other, other members of the organization that, you know, maybe we should call her again to do the same session for everybody. And also there was, you know, instead of having an evaluation session, uh, everybody was good at do, uh, giving feedbacks and evaluation because they got a hang of it after two speeches. And that is why one of our Toastmasters from Mangalore, uh, Fiona, who is also a soft skills trainer at Glowtouch, she did a session on replying right because all these women entrepreneurs have a website. And they get all these comments and they don't know how to reply to that. You know, they have some social media uh, person who handles all these things. But how do you reply it in a positive way and, you know, keeping it short? So this person, Toastmaster Fiona, was able to do a session for them. So this is how we, we customized it and, you know, made it into a package where it suits the requirements of these women entrepreneurs. Now, if it was a college, then I would have designed it in a very different way. Now, uh, there are a couple of uh, to, you know a couple of participants who have shown interest in toastmasters the feedback that i have got is one of the toastmasters was very nervous because she didn't have good uh, english speaking skills and she said for the first time when she was asked to go to the stage and talk about her business she was not nervous for the and this was for the first time and you know usually uh, four to five people push her to go to stage and talk to her you know for her to help ask her to talk uh, on the stage. And this was the first time she went without any nervousness. So that was one of the feedbacks. And one of the participants, she's already a trainer, does trainings all across India. And she said how Speechcraft helped, helped her is two days back, she went to uh, Sri Lanka representing India as a trainer. So she, during the last session, she said that the whole credit goes to Speechcraft because that made her give more importance to the content than to the presentation that she was making. So these were the kind of feedback that uh, were given. And we are still, you know, we post, valedict valedictory was supposed to be this month. And we pu pushed it not because I wanted to uh, push it to next month. It is because the participants have told me that this is so useful that more people, more of our organization, but, you know, members of our organization should know how Speechcraft will help them. So we want to have a grander valedictory so that they can influence others to join the second batch of Speechcraft. So I have not planned the second batch because it takes a lot of time. So they themselves want to have a, another batch. I, I really feel Speechcraft really helps the clubs, the coordinator, the kind of, uh, you know, learning that I have got from the eight sessions that have been done is phenomenal is what I would say. Though I am a Toastmaster from seven years, it helped me learn, unlearn, and Very relearn a lot of things. The basics of Very communication uh, is what I would say. Yeah. This is how I went about doing the speech craft. And now I know that I would uh, push all of my clubs to uh, do a speech craft. Over to you, Bina. Thanks to Sapna for that insights. You no, know, even though there is a pre-planned -pre uh, thing by Toastmasters as for doing uh, uh, for doing a, a speech craft, we can also customize it depending on the people that we have selected. There is absolutely nothing wrong in that. I take two questions in the chat and after that Guru will um, take the questions that has been received in mail to him. Now the first thing is, uh, is there a time limit with which the program might be completed? Okay, let me take that question. It's a very good yes. question. And uh, yes, there is a timeline. Once you purchase, it is valid for one year. And uh, let me also caution you, though you have one year, after completing your last session, you only have 90 days to complete your transactions in with your login ID. So you need to, and when you put your calendar for your meetings, everything, after the last meeting, you have 90 more days to complete your transactions so that it will be saved. So the coordinator has to remember these timelines. Wow. Uh, next question. Yeah. Okay. It comes with a speed craft, comes with an expiry date, Toastmasters. Please not the point. And the second is does the fee remain the same for the speed craft participants? The speed craft participants 
uh, like I mentioned at the very beginning, it is a unique, it's a standalone program. You've done the program, you pay $10 and that's it done, the event done. So when you get transformed and you move your journey into Toastmaster journey, you are embarking a long journey, you follow the Toastmasters international requirements and the fee structure, which your club will be happy to welcome. But the, keep in mind, your full credit of level one will go along with you. So that's what you can benefit directly. And with all the experiences and the uh, from the spacecraft, what you just heard from our uh, coordinators, that is there as well. Uh, next question, please. Thank you. One question from Suma Anil. He meant that who is it? Who are the typical speech crafters? I think uh, the question is who can be a speech crafter? I think any member of a Toastmasters club yeah. can be a speech crafter. It doesn't. Is that what you meant, a Toastmaster Suma? No. Yes. Uh, no. no, no. Uh, no. Speech crafter is one who is not in the aware of uh, Toastmasters. Yeah. But you keep in mind. When you are a uh, speech crafter, your login should be on a different email ID than the coordinator. So make sure that these are distinct roles and the TMI tracks you by your registered email. So make sure that you take care of those things and you can be there to learn as well. Can yes, I sir, now, something? Yeah, please. It, it's always better if, if the participant is uh, below 18 years, I think it's always better to go for YLP. YLP, yes. And, yes. and the speech craft for anybody above 18, maybe a college going student or, uh, you know, employees of an organization or uh, just community uh, in general. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank yes. you, Sapna. Now over to Guru to take care of the questions that has been received over me. Yeah. Before, before that one, let me share some questions which are frequently asked and maybe not asked at today's meeting, but they they do ask these questions. So I, I would like to touch on those ones. Then we will take those questions what we removed, uh, received by mail. So let me share some of those information. Uh, one of them is when, if my spacecraft includes multiple digital mandals and multiple coordinators, can Hello? I can I get multiple credits for the spacecraft coordinator? Yes. You know, it's, as I mentioned, a group of five can be registered under your um, registered email ID and their program. So you will be the base camp manager and the speech craft coordinator, you will get the credit. You can have another five registered under another coordinators and all this can be conducted together as long as you keep the size of the attendees, say maximum of 25 or 30, so that you can give enough opportunity for them. So that's possible. Another question which, um, Ask this, how can I confirm that my coordinator gave me credit for my speech? Now, in the base camp, you have you can access as a participant and you can see all the credits of the speeches you have completed, clearly marked by the coordinator. Just in case, if you found anything missing, you can be in touch with the coordinator and get it sorted out. Uh, and I want to highlight here, after you completed the last speech or the last uh, uh, session, Make sure within 90 days, all your uh, updates are completed and in the system. Now, this is the one I uh, mentioned briefly. After joining a Toastmasters club, you completed your speechcraft, you joined the Toastmasters club. How much credit I will receive in the Toastmasters journey for each of the speeches completed? So I, let me give you a quick summary of which you can see on the screen. And I earlier mentioned it. If you've done the speech icebreaker, you get a credit for it. You've done the remaining speeches in level one, writing a speech with purpose, your credit will be there and so on. So all those completions will be recorded. And when you migrate to a Toastmaster, remember, you should keep your same registered email ID, which you use for your speech craft program when you embark on the journey for the uh, as a Toastmaster also. All your credit will be transferred to your uh, level one and so on. So that's uh, uh, the questions which I have. And if in case you do have still some questions brewing in your mind, you could WhatsApp me or you could email to me. And with that, let me uh, request um, uh, Toastmaster Guruji to share questions you have received by registration or by email. Thanks, uh, Johnson, sir. Absolutely a great uh, session.
so i think that these are the basic questions and before your introduction uh, before your speech and many the similar questions i already have answered it in your session so one question is there how to approach companies for speech craft as we reached out but the companies are never to go ahead yeah uh, yeah see if you remember in one of the slide i mentioned about marketing speech looks like stuck binama are you able to hear us so this is the way you have to do a little bit of convincing talk and uh, share the experience which you had and share how it helped you and that's where it allows them and highlight the fact that it is not a long term program as mentioned earlier it is a fast track crash course just eight sessions you are done and then this is a quick transformation they can offer to their employees and almost free you know so that's where you can uh, market it and invite them you know and you don't have to necessarily stick one company for all your uh, space crafters you could engage multiple organization bring them together so this is uh, one way of uh, uh, i would say doing a marketing campaign to attract members other one is you can approach community organizations you could uh, conduct awareness sessions in the community events uh, sharing about it so there are a lot of ways you can spread the word yes yeah, apna please go ahead my experience of you know just adding on to what johnson sir has said and um, it's not a question i just wanted to answer this question uh, what you could do is ask the organization the decision maker what is the requirement when it comes to soft skills like every company will have their own set of drawbacks when it comes to uh, like one of the it companies that we had approached they said you know people don't come forward to speak they don't know how to you know write an email so maybe you could add that you know ask them ask the organization what is their requirement incorporate it with speech craft and then present it i think will have more value than we just telling them this is this is what we do and how it impacted us of course that should be done but also presenting it in a way that you know their requirements are met is i think would help better thank you uh guruji can we move on to the next segment no i i, I see shilp uh, one sec i see shilpi chandra's uh, hands being up uh, can we okay. take that that question too all right please go ahead yeah yeah thank you for pointing me uh, my question is related to the fees uh, which the speech craft coordinator charges per uh, per participants so i was reading the faqs and uh, one of them says that we can charge a maximum up to 60 dollars uh, the toastmasters fees per participants and minimum we have to charge 10 dollars so that we can meet the price of the digital bundle so uh, i have also written this in chat since this price is publicly visible so the speech crafters can also see that the digital bundle is of 50 dollars and five participants are joining so if we charge them more than 10 dollars anywhere between 10 to 60 and they ask the justification for it then what should we give them as a club or as a speech craft coordinator okay let me clarify this one the uh, 10 dollar per member or 50 dollar for five participant is what is directly paid to tosmasis international now when you conduct a session there are venue charges there are refreshment charges or any other rental charges which may apply audio visual equipment charges all these expenses you have to put it together when you make a budget for your session either you share with your participants or have an organization to sponsor it so all the other expenses vary from uh, session to session depending on the location and the number of participants if a company is willing to share their auditorium or their conference room for your session basically your charges will go to very minimal so beyond the $10, it depends on the actual venue and how it is done. So with this now, can we take the remaining questions? So one, one, one more question. How many coordinators are typically required to conduct a speech craft? Okay. Uh, I would say at least a main coordinator and two more assistant coordinators to support it because you have to assign a speech uh, uh, slots and you have to coordinate the plan. You have to upload the details. So 
one plus two will be a good team to work. Of course, you need the club and the SCOM to support you in other organization. So with that, uh, let us go to the second segment. Then yes, we'll... sir. The rest of the session, uh, rest of the questions we'll take uh, yes. as and when the time is, if the time is there, we'll take other questions. So we move on to the next session okay. of the youth leadership program. Okay. All right. And all right. Okay. Now you heard about what the program uh, for the adults above 18. Now we are going to talk about what we have or what Toastmasters International has put together as youth leadership program meant for teenagers or below 18. So that's what we need to take now, uh, a deep look at that one. Again, you will find the same program details in the same uh, website where you will see youth programs uh, on next to the speech craft, which gives you a good understanding of it. So these details, what I'm sharing are taken from there as well as from my experience. And I heard my story. Youth leadership program is, I would say, if you have a teenager at home or your friends have a teenager, this is one good program to transform them, not only as to enhance their communication leadership, they'll become a self-disciplined individual, which will help them in their long journey. When they go to university, they have to stand on their feet. They will understand how to take care of themselves. So if you do know someone in the age group of below 18 and uh, about 12, you can suggest them, recommend them for this program. Now, youth leadership program is the best gift you can give to the teenagers, not only in the communication to overcome their nervousness, you know, how they can talk, how they can present things logically, how can they improve their listening skills, all these things they learn by going through these eight sessions. Now, how or what are the primary goals? As I mentioned, this is a youth transformation program. And we want them to make more self-disciplined <clears throat> and enhance their communication skills in the process and develop their leadership skills. And that gives a 360 degree development for a teenager. And that's ultimately what the youth leadership program is all about. Now, it is again eight sessions of one and a half to two hours each session. And that allows between the age group of 14 to 18, or you can go for 12 to 18 to develop their communication skills and through practical experience by actually performing those reels. The program is. Um, done as part of a school you can do it after school hours or on weekends or on holidays whatever suits them more and they will go through a learning process and where they will be able to understand to deliver prepare their speeches they get the evaluations how to talk impromptu and make use of how they can how their vocabulary how to practice gestures voice modulation and constructive feedback on everything they do. All these aspects are done in a uh, youth leadership program session. Now, this program is fully manual. It has not gone yet to digital. And uh, so it is the traditional workbook style, but you have to get the workbook for the participants as well as for the coordinator for a very nominal fee only from Toastmasters International, only a couple of dollars for the workbook and just $5 for the coordinator. Once you download and buy it, you don't have to worry about it. You can buy for your group and uh, get the copies. Do consider that it takes time to get the books to reach your um, location. So do plan in advance, give about two, three months time to when you order these books. And it is like the ordering the wild picket. You have that one. And then you form a group of 20 to 25, no more than 30, I would say, in a session. Get your club as comp to support you, assign a coordinator, and at least a couple of assistant coordinators to help you. And make sure you have an exciting grand finale, uh, which will get an opportunity to present not only speech contests, their talents as well. So it will be a showcase where you can invite the parents and guests to see their children performing on that day 
along with their graduation. So plan this grand finale when you plan the first meeting itself. So the, how the program works and how do we get it done? So let's go into it very quickly. It is again a program for teenagers. There is an educational module, a curriculum by Toastmasters International in English, executed across multiple countries over the years and has been practiced well. It is also a standalone program like a crash course and children likes it uh, across eight sessions and that's how it is planned. And it is conducted mostly in collaboration with the schools or you can approach community organizations wherever you get a group of active, enthusiastic group of teenagers. And again, we have an obligation to give it to the society. We want to make sure the future leaders are developed properly. So we want to make sure that the young minds do get a proper program for them. And it is a, a platform again to test your coordinating and mentoring skills as well, because being a coordinator, believe me, when I was a coordinator, I have to literally shut down all my other personal activities for a couple of months. You will be working through the night, evaluating their speeches, giving them slots, all kinds of program tasks. And it is an ideal way of giving back to the community. And ultimately, you have a transformation program which is effective and proven for the youth leaders. Benefit, it is again transformation for the teenagers, developing their leadership and communication skills. Learn the art of collaboration. You will see the boys and girls coming together and working together in executing the program. They will become part of it. And eventually they get their self-confidence level extremely high when they complete this program. And that's where the parents feel happy. It will also unleash the hidden talents. You will see them when they take up roles like the club leadership, the each segment, the first four meetings will have a group of leaders. Then the remaining four sessions will have another group of leaders. I mean, president, VP education, so on. So you will see them performing in action live. And here again, I'm not going to go over detail. It helps you as being a YLP coordinator gives you the credit towards your DTM journey. The YLP workbooks, I will strongly encourage you buy from the TMI store because these are only a couple of dollars. You prepare again, plan it well because you're going to deal with the children. Plan, consider their exams. And if you have to break in between, fine, but work out a plan which the students can follow and ensure the responsibilities are shared because between the coordinators, the assistant coordinators, the workshop presenters, the mentors, all of this thing has to be spelled out and your team has to split this responsibility so it doesn't overwhelm any of the individual coordinators. It's very important. I know someone asked how many coordinators should be there. One plus two is a minimum, but the more the better. And grand finale, the graduation, include a talent scan where you can see them exhibit their skills and as well as a speech contest. The program works again by utilizing the curriculum and executed in participation with a community or a school. Group of 25, probably the maximum, so because you wanted to manage the uh, numbers so that they can get enough opportunity in the sessions to speak and to understand. How can you have a successful YLP? You need to have passionate participants. That's the key. We wanted their enthusiasm and their skills work together. You need to make sure we conduct a proper workshop on each of the session highlighting. If you're going to talk them to them about uh, body language, gestures, make sure that you conduct workshops to explain to them so they understand it. Keep good engagement with the participants. This is very important. Make sure they're engaged and involved in each session and ensure quality sessions are delivered. And that's where you need the coordinators and the club has come, the club members to support it. Once you put all these elements, you will have a successful YLP coming out. So make sure that you pay attention to these elements when you plan. And you will see that those young leaders will emerge out. So this is just what you can include in a grand finale. Definitely you need to have a speech contest, at least two type of contest, impromptu and prepared. And make sure that 
you develop a skit or something to show set the skill sets of them what they learned. You can create a program for that, let them practice. And some entertainment by the participants, those who didn't participate in the speech contest. And have a graduation ceremony, give them graciously their completion certificates so that they will remember this day also their parents and girls. And have some experience shared by them as well as their parents. And get the youth leaders to be able to share their testimonies and that will help you to encourage another batch, another team. I know schools which have been conducting every year um, the youth leadership program. So make sure they receive a certificate from Toastmasters International, from your club, and they will treasure it. Trust me, this is given on the graduation day and that helps them. So our purpose is how we can have successful completion of our youths so that they will have their journey when they move into the universities they move into their uh, other campuses they know how to stand on their feet with the confident take up leadership roles when they get opportunity and then also have a good level of communication and that's where you will see them emerging your first day on the last day when you see them at the grand finale, you will see the quick transformation as a parent. I have enjoyed that privilege. And later, when I was part of the club, the first thing I did was, how can I conduct a youth leadership program? And those batches standing along with me are my first youth leadership participants. Most of the students who are now are graduates, engineers or doctors right now in various universities. At least I know a few of them standing in the front. Two of them are doctors and uh, the others are in different professions. So that's where this is a program probably from eight years ago. And the future leaders, that's our um, goal. We make sure that what we can do to transform them. So here again, I'm going to give it back to um, Distinguished Toastmaster Rabina to get some feedback by the YLP coordinators who are recently doing youth leadership programs uh, around in District 121. So over to you, uh, DTM Bina. And we'll take the questions right after that. I know some raised hands are there. One sec, we have, uh, before we move on to the coordinator, we have Mohit Kalra who has raised his hands. Okay. All right, please go. Can we take it, Mohit? Yes, please. Yeah, go ahead. So, uh, DTM Johnson, thank yes. you so much for lovely insights. Of course, I've been hearing patiently for both of Speechcrafts and YLP, and I must say it's really encouraging. And the way you presented is you made it very simple. I just have one question apart from the rest of what all you explained. How do we approach or get to know which are the right audience who would be available or who would be ready to take up any of these programs? Because we know many colleges and everything. How we actually do the publicity, how we at least get to a point where people come to say, okay, yeah, we are interested. Let us know about this program. What is the best approach or your recommendation to go for it? Okay, let me take uh, one by one. Let us talk about YLP itself first, since we are talking about it, fresh in my mind. And uh -huh. it is exactly what yep. I did. So I'm sharing my own experience. Now, the sure. CBC curriculum and all the school's curriculum have something called the skill development. It is part of their curriculum now. So what they do is they do programs which will develop the students. So skill development. And uh, when the one of the school management who known to me invited me, I went ahead and did a program for about 50 students. And then when you conduct that first session, you introduce them about this program. And from the 50, you identify the really interested 25 students. And you group them, mm -hmm. and then you kickstart the program, youth leadership program. I'm sure your management will support it. This is one effective mechanism. You can take it for the schools. Now, when it comes it. to speech crafters, you can you have to explore multiple avenues. You can still uh, approach the management to get a group of teachers whom you can do the speech craft program. 
So while you are conducting the YLP, you can have a speech craft going parallel. This one approach you can take. You can go to community organization, which is more practical. Public community organization like YMCA, Wise Men's Club, anywhere you have access. Even religious uh, organizations. You can go to churches, other uh, organization, and they will be having the parents. You need to talk to them, say that we have a program where we can offer and explain to them. So conduct an awareness session for the parents and the children first and bring them towards you. I'm sure uh, that's the tactic that I have used and I managed to get uh, over 30 uh, YLPs done in, in, uh, uh, throughout my journey. So it, wow. it is, it's practically possible. <laughs> In fact, when I was in Saudi, we converted the youth leadership program into Arabic. We had 14 Saudi wow. schools conducted the program in Arabic. So they've taken an extra mile. <laughs> Mohit, I, uh, Mohit, I think it is about uh, sending some random mails to all the clubs. And then one, it, of, uh, that one of the schools will bite. And from that, you have a regular, uh, person, a regular place to conduct a YLP. So that is what I have seen. Yeah. And people keep calling yeah. in. Right, Ramlal, sir? Yeah, yeah. Best thing is to conduct a demo meet. Yeah. Go yeah. to each one of these schools and conduct a demo meet. If they get influence, mm. they'll buy it. In fact, it. so Cerner but this... was an organization which used to, I mean, uh, get a lot of speech crafts done by us. Cerner is an organization yeah. speech crafts. They didn't want to invest, invest uh, in training their employees. Got it. Uh, so and a lot of money it... has to be. So they yeah. used to... Uh, borrow our services to conduct speech crafts. So for them, yeah, it just, it. Uh, that way it works out better, cheaper in, in a way. It, it works out both ways. YLP, yeah. you get a speech craft and do speech craft and you get a YLP. It's yeah. pretty good. <laughs> so one more question in the chat before I move to the coordinator. Uh, so um, Gladys Monterio has asked, what is the minimum number of people required for to conduct a YLP? YLP minimum, you could be as low as about 15 students because you need to keep an interactive environment. Uh, I wouldn't go down less than that. Um, and then you build it up to 25 or 30. But size is limited that way because when it comes to students, you have to be fair with them, make sure they get roles and everything because there are no spectators in a YLP. Everyone will be doing something in the session. Now, I wanted to just mention to Mohit, if you do run out or you need some support, if you are in Kerala, you can call me. If you are in Bangalore, you can call Sapna. If you are in Bangalore, you can call Ramlal to come along with you to any schools or community organization. <laughs> we'll do the little talk, which I always do. <laughs> yeah, and, and considering and hearing your track record for 30 speech cards in YLP, I'm like, why aren't you in Bangalore? But anyways, want... thank you so much for your suggestions. Really helpful. Thank you. And send Mohit, me a ticket, I'll ticket. come to you into Bangalore. Yeah, <laughs> give him the ticket and he will even come to Bangalore. <laughs> because uh, YLPs and speech crafts are so dear to him. It's closer to his heart. But then uh, Ramla sir is there, right? There are a bunch of people in uh, our district and the neighboring di district who can help you with the speech craft. Yes. Now, what we get I... the... Sorry, last question. Do we get the numbers of uh, DTM Johnson and Ramla? Yes, can... I'll, I'll show it on the screen again. And uh, just one second, you can make a note of it. Um, In fact, I still remember Ajay Chitranjan joined oh, YLP yes. and went on to uh, represent Mekon at the, yes, yes. I mean, uh, international That's my convention. Details, yeah. yeah. I was the course speech coordinator for that. Wow. And Ramlal, sir, your contact? We, he'll uh, put it in the chat. Ramlal, sir, please put it on the, in the chat so that I people do, can will, disturb I, you left, right, and center. I'll and do I that, hope I'll we do. have more YLPs and speech crafters after the session. Fine, fine, fine. Now, basically, I feel this YLP and speech craft is just like a Toastmasters meeting. I'll tell you why. There are going to be dropouts. We have to re reschedule. And everything that can go wrong in a Toastmasters meeting can go wrong in a YLP and speech craft itself. So Sapna told how it was. Now let's listen to one YLP and YLP coordinator who is currently facing all these troubles. And I call the co-confidence chair of District 121, Toastmaster Vinita Umesh. Please share your experience as a YLP coordinator. Thank you, distinguished Toastmaster Bina. I recently had an opportunity to conduct a coordinate a YLP at Ashoga World School. And this experience has 
come with a lot of learning but most importantly i enjoy what i enjoyed most is the kind of interaction i got with kids how i can uh, it was mostly very fun uh sessions because uh, what happens is usually uh, i am put in a corporate setting earlier i was a area director for a corporate area so my experience prior to my ylp was handling a crowd that is corporate now from there when i started taking my ylp i i didn't know how to do it so couple of learnings that came is uh, one when you conduct a ylp i would prefer when it's kids we go for an activity oriented session no matter what you do your timer you're an accountant you're a grammarian have an activity have engaging the more engaging it is uh, the easier it is to handle your kids that is what i have felt now when i started my ylp we had an amazing school the management was very supportive uh, the first time we did a demo that evening i had all the dates for my next few sessions actually till my last till my grand finale we had all our dates uh, fixed everything was done i had a great team who was willing to support me but a murphy's law came to place with this session whatever could go wrong came wrong the first five sessions were went on smoothly i had amazing coordinator uh, session takers who did the kids loved them i enjoyed the session few things that i felt that i could have done better was i when i scheduled the ylp one of the requests from the school was can we have one session per two weeks so two weeks a gap was there from one saturday to the next saturday what happened was one saturday we will go have a really engaging session we interact we play games we have a lot of fun the next saturday i come back whatever we learned it was left with their homeworks and their school works i would ideally suggest if you are planning to conduct a ylp either cramp it into an eight day session because kids have a very low attention power they need to constantly practice so if you want to get it into their system have an eight week continuous session where you tell them that whatever you learn today you apply it to tomorrow this is a good way that you can establish what you have learned what you have ta taught to them that they will apply another thing that happened was uh, after the first five days what happened was uh, the schools had a few more holidays in the weekdays so they started having classes on saturdays saturdays was my day of ylp which they had to push it so once this happened the gap days increased so from two weeks we went to three weeks some days it was four weeks then we had holidays all these comes together so ideally when you schedule have a continuous eight day session or have a session once uh, one every week so this will be work to your benefit uh, another uh, thing was uh, towards the end what happened is i have now completed all my eight sessions what is pen pending is the grand finale i have not been able to schedule it once one uh, one of the issues that came forward was because the unavailability of a parents during a weekday so we can only schedule it on a weekend another issue was faced that they are having a um, Uh, some or the other kind of fest happening on a weekend so they have the olympiads they have their school fest inter college inter school fest so all these comes on a weekend so when you are planning uh, kindly reschedule so though we had prepared our dates prior like 3 uh, months ago for the sessions what happened was while we were conducting the sessions uh, these kind of holidays came in and we couldn't re reschedule for a better day we couldn't get a weekend so currently my grand finale is on halt because all these vacations are here so we are trying to figure the date where everybody is available so if possible i would suggest that uh, every two weeks make sure that you are in line with your school that uh, these are my dates i need it otherwise what will happen is you have your dates which was already fixed some fest will come they will push it but they will not push reschedule to another date 
they will just skip that date and see you on their next date so what happens is you become your eight uh, eight sessions will get pulled back now you have a lot of things to cover up another thing that i had a difficulty was i had 25 students in uh, participating in my ylp to schedule these 25 kids in one and a half hour session for speeches will be difficult because uh, when you're doing four minute speech and you have like five students together for us it's easy for the kids it is a bit draining uh, mm -hmm. have your agendas in such a way that this can also be mediated because it will help you uh in this thing now uh, one thing i wish i knew before i took my ylp was i wish i had known the kids better when i went to the school talk to the principal and the teachers there they want me about having four kids there who are non uh, english speakers because their mother tongue is not malayalam they don't understand malayalam they don't understand they barely communicate because they were from lakshadweep they just recently moved they it was language was a barrier there that was one thing i was told but i was not told was majority of the students were having difficulty writing and interpreting long words so this was something that i figured as the session went on as this session went on i used to uh, delegate grammarian roles and i used to get blank reports uh, when you are going and if you have some difficulties try to understand your kids have a sitting with the teachers who understand the kids because later when i was talking to the teacher saying that this so and so kid was having this issue they told yeah they have this issue in the school also so i would have wished i had known this earlier so that when i'm going for the session i could have done something better these are the few things that i encountered hope this was helpful with that i would like to conclude hope you all had got some insights on the ylp i conducted thank you and back to distinguished host master pina thank you so we may now take a question uh, from the audience uh, we can go we can uh, do both speech craft and uh, yes yes please uh, ylp guru any more questions uh, on the chat which we did not answer could you please come up then we can just wind it in another 5 minutes we are already at 2033 one question uh i anyway already he has covered it out so we are planning to conduct a speech craft in our college what tips would you give it to the same okay give it to those enthusiastic participants who are going to commit for the eight sessions because yes. every session is unique a specific topic specific workshop presenter you miss it like you attended the eight session never attended the vocabulary never attended the body language gestures you are going to miss it so you need a commitment keep a group of active committed even 15 good enough go for it so get that commitment and that's the first thing you needed yeah always have a blue bus always have a backup presenter so ideally for any session you should have two presenters in <laughs> case one drops off for uh, reasons beyond our control um we will not cut a sorry figure so we have the next person or um as next person should be there yeah there should be an education session in every session regarding the next session as such whatever is the next session you should talk about that in this session right yeah, yeah. so that they come prepared yes any other question keep, uh, keep it as crisp as possible i mean don't we should not talk for long hours you should let the participants speak more yeah, one peculiar is... one good question one one good question is coming up so they are saying we go to the school we go to the college so first we need to give a presentation uh, to the principal or the teacher the demo. question is yeah demo meeting we need to go and start with the demo meeting how to attract the audience how to attract the principal in 2 minutes <laughs> it all depends on the coordinator <laughs> If the coordinator is good people fall for him it all the okay. that's why i suggest get the coordinator who is totally energetic totally enthusiastic 
about what he says. How you say it? Yeah, initially it is, say it. he should be focused. He should be totally immersed in what he's saying. That is all. People will fall for him. And the coordinator is the bait that we. Yeah, he's the he's the bait. <laughs> correct. He is the one who runs the entire session, like D T M Johnson did now. Yes, sir. Uh, district director, distinguished toastmaster Arjun Sundar Raj is here, and he has raised his hands. Oh All yes, right, sir. Let's, let's go for him. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, thank you, Vina Johnson and uh, Ramlal, sir. I yes, uh, just wanted to add on to what uh, distinguished toastmaster Ramlal mentioned about the enthusiasm and energy level of the coordinator. Now, in terms of convincing any management. be it school or on or an organization when it comes to ylp or speech craft first and the foremost thing that is required is let's say for example if you are the coordinator or has volunteered to serve as a coordinator you need to believe that this particular program makes a difference yes. to the people that would participate correct and when you believe in it 100% the you will you will definitely be able to convince anyone that will talk to you about the program like how you as a club officer or a club member brings in another guest or a member into the club right because you believe in the toastmasters program and that's why you talk to people about it and that's why they are invited to the meeting and then that's the same reason why they get uh, included as members it's the same format that follows when it comes to any kind of interaction or a pitch that you do for uh, speech craft or ylp thank you and back to you bina perfect yeah just adding to what um, uh, distinguished host marjan said uh, just a, a quick experience on it once i went to a school and the school said uh, nothing happens until the board of directors gives a go ahead so they told me to meet with the board of directors there were 14 of them the session was at 10 o'clock i arrived there 9 o'clock because i wanted to meet each one individually as they walk in so i managed to speak to them individually for 5 10 minutes before the board starts and the meeting went i presented my case then at the end to the board of directors the chairman asked to the principal who was there is there anything preventing you in conducting this one he said no nothing so why did you call me and that was it i got a green flag and the next day we planned it the session went ahead so you have to sell it at, at the highest level when it comes to school because school children anything being conducted in the campus ultimately the school principal is responsible so make sure you sell it from the top and yes. that's very important and once you start it there will be advertisements like ylp coordinators role available anybody willing to take it the school <laughs> just go on and on mm -hmm. with that i don't uh, do we have any more questions or we will wind up it's dinner time Yeah, one question Sapna, is there about the demo yeah, meeting. Yeah, Sapna, Sapna. Yeah, not, okay. not a question. I just, I'll just take a minute to add something. When it comes to YLP, when it comes to private colleges, maybe we have to convince them what we are, you know, what is it all about. But there, you know, it's a uh, uh, youth uh, YLP is also about giving back to the community. There are a lot of uh, government aided uh, schools where nobody goes and does anything. I think uh, there have been couple of uh, schools in Mangalore where we have approached and they really appreciated that you know we went and spoke to them. We didn't have to even convince them about you know what we are doing and how it is done. They were really welcoming us about you know whatever you want to do, just you know do it. So I th I think this is one of the ways where we can give back to the society is what I wanted to say. Yeah. we did that in bangalore as well yeah yeah that's one easy way of getting it so before uh, i wind up maybe i'll ask i call the moana of district 121 to uh, give the thank you uh, closing remarks over to you distinguished toastmaster savita salian Yeah. Uh, thank you, Bina. So it's time for joke of time. So, dear Toastmasters and friends, it's with a heart full of appreciation and gratitude that I deliver this vote of thanks on behalf of everyone who participated in today's exceptional webinar on speechcraft and youth leadership. First and foremost, our deepest thanks goes to go to D T M Ramlal. and uh, samuel johnson your dedication and vision in bringing these incredible programs to our district are truly commendable 
You have not only been the resource person for this insightful webinar, but have also spearheaded initiatives that empower individuals of all ages to discover their voices and unlock their leadership potential. Thank you, DTM Samuel Johnson. We are fortunate to have such a passionate and committed leader at the helm. A special shout out to DTM Sapna and Toastmaster Vinita Omesh for your invaluable contribution. To all our wonderful participants, thank you for joining us today and actively participating in this enriching learning experience. Your questions, enthusiasm, and willing to learn are the driving force behind the success of such events. Finally, a big thank you to the entire organizing team behind this webinar, especially our webinar chairs, DTM Bina Vaz, Atosmasa Gurunath Kulkarni, and Roshni Pinto. Your meticulous planning, technical expertise, and dedication have made this event a resounding success. Today's webinar wasn't just an informative session, it was a spark that ignited curiosity, fueled personal growth, and reaffirmed the transformative power of Toastmasters. Through, power, through programs like Speechcraft and Youth Leadership, we are building a community of confident communicators and inspiring leaders who will leave a lasting impact on the world. Let me con conclude by thanking each one of you for making this webinar a truly special and unforgettable experience. May the learnings and inspiration gleaned today stay with us as we continue our journey of personal and professional growth. Thank you once again and keep on speaking, leading and inspiring. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Distinguished Toastmaster Savita and to all those members who have been listening to this session. Please feel free to disturb Distinguished Toastmaster Johnson Samuel and Distinguished Toastmaster Ramlal Simon or any person who has been agreed, who has agreed to help you. Anytime. In, uh, uh, yeah, anytime. All, so just always, go ahead always. and let's have more speech crack, more YLPs coming so that in the next six months, the district is in a better place in terms of membership in the way uh, membership and also in the way we back we give back to the society so this is distinguished toastmaster bina was signing off with the webinar chairs gurunath kulkarni and this uh, roshni pinto thank you so much guruji don't forget for a quick photo i know a lot of them left but <laughs> they take one before the yeah. yes. guru please do the honors put on yeah. your nice smiles yeah, turn your cameras, please, those who are remaining. We still got 25 in the room. <laughs> At one point, we were 60 plus. So. One minute, I'm just taking it. Keep smiling, work it out. Happy smile. Your screenshots are recorded. Thank you so much. Happy to see Thank you, you all. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. And uh, it took a little while, but I'm sure it helped you. And I'm sure you are free to come back to us anytime. Thank you as well. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Good night. Thank you.